Hello from West Sandgate, Vermont. We are at a beautiful year-round residence uh, located up a very steep valley, about 900 feet above sea level. Uh, you can't get more remote than this. Uh, for a long time, there wasn't even internet service available here. And when it did come in, it was off direct TV. Uh, the original owner of the house put a direct TV system in, but again, direct way internet is measured in the hundreds of kilobits a second. So the uh, current owners of the home asked me if it was possible to get television reception aside from direct TV. And ordinarily, I would have said no, because this location is about 54 miles from the Albany, New York transmitter site on Helderberg Mountain. And not only that, it's blocked. So the problem is that the house is at 900 feet above sea level, which sounds good on paper, but directly opposite it and about a half a mile away is a hill that ranges anywhere from 300 to 400 feet higher than where the house is. So that is a very close in obstruction. However, not all is lost because when I looked at the site, I thought it might be possible for them to get TV reception using what's called knife edge refraction. This is a phenomenon that was discovered by people running FM operations in trucks and cars and also listening to FM stations. They'd notice as they would drive closer and closer to a range of hills. On the other side, of course, was the FM station. Uh, the signal would get stronger and stronger and stronger, then all of a sudden just vanish, go off the cliff. And what that is, is knife edge refraction. Radio waves from the TV and FM stations are actually bending over the hill. And if you drive through the maximum angle of refraction, the sweet spot, your reception is perfect. So I theorized this might work here. What we wind up with is a very interesting installation. As you can see here, we have a high band VHF antenna, also low band VHF, that sits about 16 inches off the ground in the middle of a rose bush. And then a little bit higher, we have a UHF antenna that sits slightly at a different angle, not in the rose bush. But the reception here is great, and all the major channels are coming in fine. The only possible exception would be channel 6 WRGB, uh, because the noise floor is very high here for some reason. I have to do some more detective work and find out why. So we've used a combination of a spectrum analyzer, we've used a transport stream reader, and finally a television to verify where this antenna needs to be. And this particular antenna, the high band, low band VHF antenna, has to be in that spot. If you rotate it any, anywhere from 10 degrees to the east, rather, or the west, uh, signal drops out. If you raise or lower the antenna by as much as six inches, signal starts to break up. So it's a very small defined focal point for the refraction angle. The UHF antenna is a little bit more forgiving, but it also is taking the benefit of refraction. If you were to lower the UHF antenna down to where the VHF antenna is, reception would be pretty poor. So it has to sit higher. It's sitting at about six feet above the ground. And the angle is slightly more to the east, maybe about 10 degrees or so more to the east. That's where the UHF stations peak. So again, we have an antenna mounted in the middle of a rose bush, and we did have to prune some rose bush branches this morning to install it, uh, but it works great. Now we have a lot of signal here, so we are running into a uh, channel master preamp. It's uh, dual gain, so we have it in high gain mode. That's mostly to give us a good carrot to noise ratio. Uh, and then we can take that signal and split it probably three ways, send it to three different TVs, and we have more than enough headroom for reliable reception. And that result of all this is that the owner of the house is going to disconnect the direct TV system, which they really weren't using much anyway, and just rely on over-the-air television. Now, would this work for other neighbors in the area? Possibly. We'd have to figure out what the refraction angle is. It might not be in a great place. As it turns out here, it's below a deck. It's in a spot where it's easy to get wiring to. But down the road, it might have to be up the side of a hill, or it might be in the middle of a pond, or it could be out in the middle of the highway. Who knows? So to some extent, this is luck. It's just luck that we found that there was a refraction of a signal, and the sweet spot is right here. So we'll show you in a little bit some of the work we've done. You can see better how we installed everything, and then we'll actually look at spectrum analyzer plots, and we will look at um, some actual received television. Now this is a neat trick. What I'm doing here is the uh, signal is being split in a rather unusual way. The cable from the top is coming from the mast mounted preamplifier, so that requires power. On the lower right of the splitter, that cable goes inside to the main television in the upstairs living room, and that's where the power source comes from. The cable to the left actually has a DC block on it, and that goes to the other end of the deck where the signal is again split in two 
to go to two separate TVs, one in a downstairs bedroom and one in an upstairs bedroom. Doing it this way gets around a problem we had before with DC blocking, where we had to run extra cable up to the living room and then back from the living room to the other televisions. So it, it was too much cable, excess cable. And by just adding a simple DC block at the splitter here, I'm now able to uh, cut the cable length by probably 75%. Now I'm using a spectrum analyzer to uh, check out the signals. So right now we're looking at the uh, UHF TV spectrum. So we have stations on channel 18, channel 19, uh, we have channel 22, 24, 25 I believe. That's the high band uh, VHF spectrum. So we have stations on channel 7, channel 8, Channel 10, which is Vermont Public Television, and Channel 12, which is uh, NBC out of Albany. So Channel 12 is received quite easily. Now we have a span of 30 megahertz per view. So there's Channel 7, which is WNYA, Channel 8, which is WXXA, that's the Fox affiliate. And here is Vermont Public Television, Channel 10. Uh, channel 12, which is quite strong, as you can see here, it does have quite a bit of tilt on it from multipath, which you'd expect with signal refraction. Um, the peak of the signal is uh, probably 10 dB stronger than either channel 7 or channel 8, and again adding 12.5 dB at this resolution bandwidth means that this is really peaking at around uh, minus 53, which is a very strong signal indeed. And if we compare that to the UHF signals that we saw earlier, you'll see that they are very, very strong here. So here is channel 18, uh, marginal, but wasn't intended to cover this area anyway, but we can pick it up. Channel 19, which is ION, quite a bit of tilt on that. And then here are the rest of the UHF channels. And all of these are, are plenty strong enough to pick up and split the signal three ways to go to three different TVs. I'm using TS Reader to verify that we have reliable signals. So this will give me a, a look at the transport stream and I can see what the bit error rate is. Right now I'm looking at channel 24, which is WTEN, and we have a very robust bit rate. Uh, everything looks green, and of course we have solid reception here. So uh, the system works. Yes, there's a lot of multipath on it, um, but it is bending the signals. The equal equalizers in these TVs are uh, vintage uh, late 2000s, like 2008, 2009, 2010, uh, and none of them are really having trouble decoding the signal. So uh, you can do it. You can bend a signal and, and get reliable reception. And with the uh, minor channels associated with the, with the uh, uh, main channels that we're pulling in, the uh, major channel, we have probably about 24 different channels of programming, uh, which is more than enough for the amount of TV that's being watched up here.